Good morning, everyone. It's your morning drive with Adam. Ah, oh, sorry, I had some in my eye. I had some in my eye, and I don't know why or what it is, but it's been just itching me all morning. I um, hope you guys are doing all right today. Um, we're going to continue talking about faith in Hebrews 11, and it's a new week, and I'm thinking, I'm not really sure yet, we're just going to kind of go with the flow, but this might be our last full week talking about faith, um, and then we're going to move on to our next checkpoint. Um, but continuing on in 11, where we left off, we had Isaac on Friday, and um, he we basically talked about um, seeing the blessings and not being able to know like kind of putting your trust back into people. Well, if you remember, he had two sons, Jacob and Esau, and Esau was um, a very hairy man, and Jacob was a very deceiving man. Well, after Jacob steals the blessing from his father, he runs away. And this is where we're going to talk about the faith of Jacob. And a little bit about his backstory. He runs away, runs to his uncle Laban, um, and ends up, and this is like one of those distant uncle kind of things, um, and he has like... Laban has some um, um, uh, daughters and stuff like that, and he starts working for Laban, and Laban, it's almost like slave labor, and Laban's not a really great man. Um, but he has two daughters, one of them uh, Rachel and one of them Leah. Leah's the older daughter, and apparently she wasn't all that great looking, <laughs> sadly. But apparently Jacob really liked Rachel. And so he was going, he wanted to marry Rachel. So he says, Laban says, fine, if you want to marry my daughter, you need to be... Um, uh, you need to make sure that you're working, or you need to work for me for seven years. So he works for seven years. Seven long years. And during their wedding ceremony, we don't exactly know what it looked like, but they would have, like, the veil over the bride. Well, the veil, I guess, was so thick, and it, it was dark out or something. I don't really know. Laban tricks uh, Jacob, and he ends up marrying his eldest daughter, Leah, first. And back then, you know, it was by binding, so he was married to Leah. So if he wanted Rachel now, because it was back then you could take multiple wives, not something you really want to do today, just so you know, um, but you could take um, uh, you could take multiple wives, and he wanted um, to have, actually, he really wanted to have uh, Rachel as his wife, so he worked seven more years and finally got to marry Rachel. And there's a reason why you don't want to have multiple wives, which we'll see here in, in a bit, but uh, fast forward a little bit. Jacob is not the greatest. Uh, he ends up, all right, Rachel can't seem to really have kids or struggles having kids. So Leah, he has a bunch of kids with Leah. Um, is it 11, 10 or 11? I think it's 11. Anyway, he has a lot of kids with Leah, with Leah. And then in the middle of them all, he ends up finally having Jacob with Rachel. Now, here's where the problem starts, because with whenever you have a favorite wife, you'll obviously have a favorite child, and Jacob ends up having a favorite child in, in Joseph, and Joseph being the, I don't know if I said earlier, but Joseph is the favorite child. Later on, um, he ends up having another kid with Rachel named Benjamin, and Benjamin becomes the favorite as well. Well, he ends up like showering blessings upon Joseph, Jacob does. And uh, at one point, he well, this is this comes later, but before that, sorry, he was with Laban. There's a lot more to the story with Joseph too, but before Laban, um, he uh, ends up running away from Laban, and there's like this whole convoluted story about it too. And he like kind of tricks him, and he's heading back uh, into um, back to his home country. And remember, he ran away from that country because he tricked his father and was. Up, you know, scared to death that his brother Esau was going to kill him. Like, he just was scared to death. So, he ends up running away. He ends up tricking Laban. Long story. Uh, you should read it. Definitely read it, because it's very, very, very interesting. Goes into um, Esau, get, get, like, goes towards Esau, and, like, the whole time he's expecting Esau to, like, um, you know, want to kill him. Well, there's, like, a whole crew of people that comes towards uh, Jacob as they're approaching this land. And Jacob's like, oh, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Sure enough, it was a welcome party. And Esau is ecstatic to see his brother. He's like, come on in. We can share this place. I'll have a great feast for you. And that's why Esau, I just love Esau because he's just like a good old guy. Like he's just a you know, honest, hardworking um, guy who just focuses on the things that he can take care of and doesn't focus too much on, on the stuff that he doesn't really care about. Like... 
I really enjoy um, Esau's character that way. But uh, Jacob, instead of taking that bag, and this is where I don't really understand Jacob's character, um, but he decides instead to go to a spot, uh, another land, which historically you don't want to go to because, you know, God said that these people are bad for you. Like, they are not healthy for you. Um, so he goes there anyway, ends up committing some crazy, like, uh, very backward thing you should read about, uh, stuff involving his children and the murdering people and, yeah, Jacob really struggles here. But they end up, after all of this, then he ends up having Joseph, um, and ends up, like, blessing Joseph, another mistake of, of Jacob. All of his brothers get jealous and throw Joseph down a well, or a cistern, basically, and uh, sell him into slavery. That's another story for Joseph, which we'll deal with Joseph later. But then Jacob, the, the whole story ends up, you know, he thinks his son died, he has another son, Benjamin, um, but all of his brothers really like Benjamin, they don't like Joseph, because apparently Joseph was, like, cocky and arrogant. They go, yeah, I'm the favorite son. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if... Uh, Jacob learned a little bit whenever with Benjamin because they all loved Benjamin everyone loved Benjamin but in the end hey guess what Joseph doesn't die um spoiler alert he ends up becoming the like vice president if you will of Egypt and is in kind of in charge of everything and so he ends up during the big famine Jacob and all of his family end up having to come to Egypt and Joseph ends up housing them and in the end of it all looking back on his life it says that Joseph, um, on faith, blessed all of his sons and leaned on his staff. Um, and I don't know the significance of the leaning on the staff. I don't, I don't there's a lot of people that have debate about that, and I don't really know. Um, but the thing I want to focus on there is, once again, that blessing of his sons. And one thing I want to look at here is a different kind of faith. And I set all that up. I've been talking a lot. But I, I want to set all that up to talk about a different kind of faith, because I think sometimes people... When they think about faith, they look back on their lives and they wonder, did I make the right direction? Because we like to think of God's direction in our lives as almost like a linear path. Like God is, you know, taking us um, down this one preset path. And if we deviate from that path, it's like, ah, oh, dang it. But we want to try to get back on that path. I don't, I don't necessarily think that's how God's will works. Um, I don't think that God has like preordained one specific direction for us to go. Uh, I think that he provides us a lot of options and then kind of guides us and, and decisions along the way. But I don't think that there's like, I think there's a lot more free will in what we have than uh, him predetermining everything that we do. But anyway, we, that's a whole predestination, you know, debate I don't really want to have right now. But the point is, I think sometimes people, when looking back on their lives, they live with a lot of regret. And they look back and think, Gosh, should I make that right decision there? Oh man, if I would have just done this, it would have been different. And we, we spend a whole lot of time worrying and dwelling over things that we can no longer control. Um, I mean, it is healthy in one sense to look back on the past and say, hey, that was stupid. I'm going to learn from it. But it's another thing to look back and go, gosh, if I would have just changed this, my life would be different now. I mean, you can experience those thoughts and think those thoughts, but then let them go. Like, don't dwell on them. Don't um, sit there and, and just continue to let them eat away at you. Because that's not healthy, and it's not going to help anything. It literally does nothing. Like I said, you can look back and be like, that was a dumb mistake. I'm going to do something different. But don't continue to dwell on that, because it does literally nothing for you. There's no benefit to do that. Um, and I wonder if Jacob, looking back, thought those things. But this is where the faith part comes in you got to look back on your past and realize that you have to have faith that the decisions that made led you to where you are today and that it is the really the, the best place you need to be right now. Um, you got to have faith that the things that are working, working in your life are working for the good. Romans uh, 8 talks about how God works for the good for all those who follow our God works for the good for all of those who are following according to his will, something like that. <laughs> I'm butchering that. Um, but uh, anyway, you get the idea that uh, God is working for the good for people. And he 
we got to have faith that looking back, we can't live in regret. We can't look back and continue to, you know, hate on ourselves and, and belittle ourselves. we got to live in faith that the decisions we made are for a purpose and are working towards the good. Even the ones that are bad, God is using them for the good. So give yourself a break today. Don't, you know, don't belittle yourself. Don't, uh, don't hate on yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself. Look back. Send your blessings, you know, on to people in front of you. And I'm, ex- I'm extrapolating for this, but lean on your staff. You know, look back and with some, I guess, with some dignity as you're on your own life. And some honor. And, and what you've done even through the mistakes. Kind of like Joseph. Excuse me, Jacob. <laughs> kind of like Jacob. Um, so, yeah. Think about that today. We're going to pray. And your challenge today is um, to really spend some time today thinking about the stuff you've done and then letting those go one by one. If you're still dwelling on something in your life, you're still holding on to this thing that you feel like you're regretting, let it go. Let it go. I want you to pray today and, and talk with God, meet with God, and say, God, I'm letting this go today. And every time it comes back into my mind, I want you to push it out. I want you to kick that thought out of my mind. Um, and, and then do it. You know, Don't keep dwelling on it. So let's pray. God, we just thank you so much for today. Uh, we thank you for your unending love towards us, your patience towards us. And God, I just thank you that you work for the good, like your word talks about. That you, you can take something that's tragic, um, sad, and God, you can work it for our good and, and turn it into something that is glorifying to you. So help us to today to push those thoughts out uh, of the thoughts of you know, self-deprecation, the, the, the hatred that we might have towards us, the shame that we feel. We can push those thoughts out, God, and we can realize that you are a bigger God and that you have a bigger plan and purpose for all of us. Help us to see that today. We love you, God, and we want to worship you today. We pray these things in your name. Have a great day, guys. Love you, and I'll see you tomorrow.